and welcome to another Throwback Thursday Bookmas video. So as you might be aware, in December we're doing Bookmas, so we're doing a video every single day, but on our Thursdays we're making them throwbacks because there were a few videos that we filmed earlier in the year that just never got uploaded or edited for some reason or another, so they are coming at you for the five Thursdays in December. Uh, so this week's Bookmas Throwback Thursday is going to be our February wrap-up. So in February we decided to give ourselves a little challenge and we were only allowed to read books that began with the word the. This was great in theory, it was not so great in practice. Uh, we read some good books, we read some one stars, as far as I can remember we read quite a lot of one stars. Um, I can remember there being at least one that Sean wanted to throw in the bin as soon as we'd finished it. So I will let you be handed over to February Alice and she will tell you about the amazing array of books that we read back in February 2020. Also, there's a lot of fresh new baby sounds in the background. Oh, there's a lot of fresh new baby sounds in the background, apparently that's because embarrassing. They're, they're running around all through Lots each. of running around. Um, yeah. New babies, don't try and film in front of them. <laughs> don't try and start a booktube channel when you're like seven months pregnant. Why would you do that, Pass Alice? That was silly. Anyway, enjoy the video and I will see you tomorrow with another new one, even though this is new for you, it's old for me. So see you tomorrow. Bye, but not bye, carry on watching. <laughs>
Um, if you haven't read the original selection series, then that's exactly the same thing. You have the prince who's trying to pick his future queen. This is the princess who's trying to pick her prince consort. Edelin's character fluctuated wildly in the first book. Like, you honestly wouldn't believe it was the same character from beginning to end, and it's not a logical step of character progression. It's very, it jumps all over the place, and it's not very well followed through. This book's a lot more coherent. I don't know whether it's just because it's very, very short, but um, she keeps it all together and um, I found it a lot more interesting because there were a lot less boys and the boys that were in this seemed a lot more fleshed out. In the first book I kept finding myself getting confused between who Ian was and who I literally can't remember any of their other names. Uh, I think there might have been like a Mason. Um, but yeah, I was happy with who she ended up with. I thought it was very predictable but it worked in a really nice way. Um, it's just a cute light-hearted end to a series that became quite drudgy in the middle. Um, I probably won't be keeping hold of these because I'm, I'm definitely not going to reread them. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I powered through and a four star is a pretty strong one to end on even if the majority of them were like two or three stars. The next book that I finished in February was The Museum of Heartbreak by Med Ledder. Meg Ledder. I'd been looking forward to this one for a very long time because it's about a girl who makes a museum of heartbreak. Um, she gathers all the things that remind her of the person who broke her heart and she makes it into a museum. Now, the, when the first chapter is just filled with dinosaurs, that's a good time. I love me some dinosaurs. I was very excited and then things went rapidly downhill and it ended up being a one star and it was the hardest book for me to read this month despite the fact that it's teeny tiny. So within the first kind of chapter, so you get like these little bits where you get illustrations and it tells you, I don't know whether this is going to mess the focus up, but I'm going to show you. Um, it tells you like what's in the museum, where she's got it from, like, so she's borrowed a lot of things from her friend of frame. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's a hard name to pronounce. Um, so when you're following her in this relationship with this guy called Keats, you're like, well, why does she keep going on about a frame? And so from like the first chapter, I was like, oh. They're totally going to end up together. I, I, you'll not be surprised when you realise that they do. Um, it is the least surprising twist I've ever read in anything ever. Like, if you're going to do a museum of heartbreak based off of her, oh, it's supposed to be based off of, like, her with this guy called Keats. If that's going to be your, like, focused relationship, like, make more things about Keats at the beginning. Don't just be like, a frame, a frame, a frame, a frame, a frame. Keats. Like, that really <laughs> makes it so obvious. Like, it just really disappointed me. And it ended up, it reminded me a lot of, like, Dasha Lily's Book of Dares. Like, she was that kind of, like, all over the place character. And, like, Keats was just too cool for school. And his name was Keats. Come on, god damn it. Who's going to name their kid Keats if he's not going to end up being a pretentious asshole? So, yeah, not the one for me. Which I'm really disappointed in because if I loved this, I was going to keep it. And it's such a beautiful cover and it's got it's so cute. But this one is going to end up getting donated, which makes me very sad. But also it'll make me sad seeing it on my shelf. Because it was my first one star since like August. Which is funny considering what's about to happen in the rest of this video. I might as well get into it now because there's no better time to do it. I'm gonna do very, very brief thoughts on the five books that we picked out of our TBR jar because it didn't go well. So the first book from the TBR jar was The Sham by Ellen Allen, which we DNF'd because there was like really gratuitous like torture scenes of like these mean girls torturing this like little boy who was autistic. And it was horrible. And like I read some messed up stuff. I've read some like horror things. I've read like animal torture and stuff. And if it makes sense with the plot and if it's done in a non-gratuitous, like obviously the author is not enjoying writing this, but the characters need to do it for the plot kind of way, it makes sense. The author genuinely seemed to be enjoying some really sick stuff, so I couldn't get any further. Like they made him bite off a bird's head until he defecated. Not for me, not the one. And no. No, I'm glad that Ellen Allen hasn't written any more books because if any of them were as bad as this one, it would just be a crying shame. Like, who who writes this stuff? That's not good. So the second book from the TBR jar was The Messenger by Pamela Dumont. Now, looking at the cover, I thought this was going to be like a spooky story because it had like a girl in like a really long white dress with like a flowing candle and it looked like it was going to be ghosty. It was not. It was a portal. Um, so, girl falls off of the subway tracks through time. 
And then she like randomly appears on like this homestead where all of these people have just been massacred and she's the only one that's survived. She always sits up and she's like, oh, where am I? But I'll just pretend like as soon as I hear someone calling a name because it's my middle name, I'll be like, yes, that's definitely me. You're definitely referring to me, even though I know that's not my name. So that was the first thing that kind of made me go, huh. And then the relationship was like really cheesy and corny and wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, I actually ended up enjoying it a little bit more, but then it ends. <laughs> so the book ends on a really, really high cliffhanger. So she like steps off of the train and then she sees her boyfriend from the past. But this is like the future time. <gasps> Has he called her too? Who will know? And then a random like portal chaser man comes out of nowhere with a knife and then it just ends. And I don't like cheap cliffhangers. Did you give us a spoiler warning? Too? No, I didn't. Should I have given us a spoiler warning? Probably, but who's going to read it? It came out in like 2012 and... Also, if you're watching a wrap-up. If you're watching a wrap-up, wrap you should be aware spoilers. of spoilers. But yeah, no. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> oh, just ruined the entire plot. Never mind. But, um, yeah, so basically, I, I hate the fact that it ends on a really cheap cliffhanger. It just makes you, like, have to buy the second book and I'm not buying into that. And then, like, there's still 25% of the book left on my Kindle because it's a preview of one of her other books. You could at least have done, like, a preview of the second book so that the cliffhanger was less cheap and then you, like, resolved it a little bit so that people felt like they would want to carry on with the series on their own merit rather than just, oh, I need to know what happens. I just think that's really, really not good practice, in my opinion. Like, I would rather have a well-crafted cliffhanger that slightly resolved the story so that you could leave it at a satisfying place, rather than like, a man's just got off a train with a knife, the end. Come on. So the third book that we read for the TBR jar was The Lost Letters of William Wolfe by Helen Curran. I thought this was going to be a really cute one, kind of like The Rosie Project, where it's like, oh, a guy who's never been loved finds love through letters coming into this Lost Letters depot where he works. It wasn't like that at all. It was a guy emotionally cheating on his wife because they were having a rough patch in their relationship. Not what I signed up for, not cute at all, did not enjoy, 20 times longer than it needed to be, one star. The next book, I've written more, I've written more. I've written a longer review on my blog, which will be going up at some point. It's probably already up by the time this video goes up, but yeah, I'll, there's, there's more thoughts for the TBR jar over there, but I don't have any more time for that book. I was so annoyed by it, really cheap, really didn't enjoy. So the fourth book that we read for the TBR jar was The Smoke Thieves by Sally Green and as you can see I probably should have read this before because I've had this copy since like March 2018 and I didn't read it and it's so beautiful. Um, I'm conflicted on this one. I'm very very conflicted because we follow, as you can see, a princess, a soldier, a hunter, a traitor and a thief. There's lots and lots of perspectives and I only cared for three of them. So we follow a girl called Tash, who is a demon hunter. She traps demons with her partner and they kill the demons for their smoke and then they sell it. Interesting perspective. There's a princess called Catherine and the guy she's in love with called Ambrose. Wasn't interested in either of them and the majority of the story kind of revolved around them and they're like, will they, won't they? They obviously will because she won't stop talking about him even though he disappeared like three months ago relationship. Meanwhile, there's two other characters whose names I'm actually struggling to remember already, which is really sad, Edian and March. I knew it was a month, I just couldn't think what month. Um, so Edian is the secret son of a prince. So they are, Edian has gone to take him back to his father, but wait, he's actually gonna take him, instead of taking him to his father, he's gonna take him to his uncle, who is Catherine's father. And the two countries are in like this big war, so, March is hoping that if he, because his people have been betrayed by Edgen's father, so he's hoping that if he takes Edgen to his father's rival, then he'll get like rewards, gold. I'm not quite sure what the plan is there, but um, yeah, he thinks he thinks that's a good idea because it's, one of his people suggests it to him. Convoluted is the easiest word for this one. Uh, Consider it's a YA fantasy, it feels very high fantasy, it feels like it could be an adult one if it was a bit more fleshed out and if it was a bit more kind of, if it was a bit more going on. Um, yeah, I didn't care about Catherine, I thought she was very boring. Um, the fact that her entire plotline just hinges around the fact that women are oppressed in this world, um, it was quite, it made me feel quite beaten down. Um, I love Edgin and March together. I think that 
because Edgen is really flirty with March from the beginning and March is a bit like oh why is this guy like flirting with me I don't get it but I can feel that there's definitely things going there and I love a slow burn romance so I'm really hoping that like in the second book that that's explored a bit more because that they're really promising um Tash and her partner great characters absolutely loved them so this ended up being a three star because I was just really conflicted like there were times when I just wanted to put it down because I was really bored and there were other times when I couldn't stop reading because we'd have like Tash then March then Edgen then Tash then March then Edgen but then you'd get like Catherine and Ambrose Catherine and Ambrose Catherine and Ambrose and I would just be like I just don't want to read this anymore I'm interested to see where the series goes that's for sure um it's a very strong series starter she builds the world very well you can tell that Sally Green has thought a lot about the mythology behind this place she's thought a lot about the way that she wants the world to work the demons are very interesting, the way that the smoke works is interesting, there's like different colours do different things, um, but it's it's very much an opener and I think the, the success of the series will hinge on the later instalments. Uh, we are going to try and get to the demon world this month because The Burning Kingdoms I believe is the last book which comes out in August, um, but I'm not, I didn't love this one as much as I loved Half Bad because I think Half Bad revolves around the fact that it's got a really unique storytelling style so you get um nathan who's the main character in half bad you get his thoughts like very rapid fire there's lots of like one word on a line like maybe one word on a page it's very pacey it's very unique and this one just feels quite generic which is such a shame because i really thought that sally green was gonna take fantasy and do it in a completely different way um, she didn't which is a shame but I think it's very very different to her first book so I can imagine it would take her a while to like get used to this style but yeah definitely had the most thoughts about this one out of all the TBR jar ones um, and I'm glad that I read it but it definitely wasn't what I was expecting and it definitely didn't wow me as much as half bad did so probably in for a reread of that at some point soon to try and like revive my love for Sally's writing really sad about that one <laughs> and the last book for the tbr jar was the sisters of the winterwood by rena rosner um so this follows two girls called Lya and Liba. um Liba is a bear and Lya is a swan um because their mother is a swan and their father is a bear um so it's about kind of the prosecution of jews and the way that um because they're other then they get quite attacked um, the kind of magical realism worked really well, it was well described, there was like a lot of nice kind of flashbacks to like how these people became swan and bear people, um, why it happened to their parents, how it all works in like their little clans. Um, the only thing that kind of conflicted me a little bit was that Lieber's story was told in uh, prose, whereas Elias chapters were told in verse. It sped up the story a lot and I liked that but it just didn't really make much sense. I think it was kind of like meant to be like the difference between the bear who's the more logical, the more structured and the swan who's like the more airy and floaty but um, it it didn't really translate well at points because there were quite a lot of like gaps between the story so like Lyra would pass out and then Lieber would pick it up and then you wouldn't really know what had happened there and then Lieber would tell you what she thought had happened and then Lyra would pick it up and it would feel like there'd been like another chunk missing so it was very disjointed um but i i did really enjoy the setting and i really enjoyed the atmosphere so i ended up giving that one four stars um it was kind of close between a three and a four but i think the ending kind of pulled it all back together quite nicely and it wrapped it up very well and Raina rosner is definitely an author i'm going to be looking out for more of in the future because she's currently only written this one novel um but if you like magic realism and you like things that talk about controversial topics in a very good way and it's kind of an own voices because she is jewish and she's talking about the plight of the jews so if you're interested in those kind of things i definitely recommend it so as you can see the tbr jar was a little bit of a fail in february but we've already got march's picks out and they're looking hopeful but then i was really hopeful about most of these so we'll see how it goes and now back to the other books we read this month and another disappointment for you was the secret commonwealth by philip pullman Considering this pitch is like 700 pages, you wouldn't think that I could have hated it as much as I did, but we ended up giving it two stars, which is the lowest out of any of the books that we've read of Philip Pullman's so far. Um, so you, The Secret Commonwealth picks up after the events of His Dark Materials. Um, it's the second book in the Book of Dust series, but La Belle Sauvage is a prequel. So it goes La Belle Sauvage, then the His Dark Materials series, and then The Secret Commonwealth. And when we meet up with Lyra and Pantalaemon, uh, they're not talking they hate each other um 
they've just grown apart like pan keeps going off by himself lyra's like stop talking to me she's very spoiled considering lyra was one of those people that like no matter what bad things happened to her she was still there for pan she was still there for like her friends she was very much like a people person all of a sudden she feels very isolated she feels like a completely different character um she they end up pan leaves because he says he's going to try and find her, like, imagination again, which is just hilarious because, yeah, like, honestly, he needs to. Um, and then Lyra tries to, like, follow him. There's loads of stuff going on with, like, roses being rare commodities now and there's, like, rose wars and people are killing each other for, like, this rose water. Um, it's it's explained very well, considering it's, like, 650 pages. He has enough room to explain it well. But I just found that I didn't really care because dust seems to have completely fallen by the wayside um it's suddenly all about roses instead it's fine but like it feels like the original trilogy was good enough by itself it didn't need any extra and it feels like he could have written the belle sauvage to like give some more of a like uh -oh. background to it baby there's baby. baby there's baby, baby. there's baby she's on baby. the stairs it's fine it's fine um she's on the stairs it's okay <laughs> But um, yeah, it feels like the Belle Sauvage could have been nice as like a revisiting the series, kind of like, oh, one last hurrah, this is how Lyra came to be with the nuns. But following on with Lyra's story, I just feel it's unnecessary. Um, it feels like he's trying to get... <laughs> Sorry, she's making me laugh, she's just on the stairs laughing at me. I feel so demoralised. Um, <laughs> how rude. Um, but no, it feels like he's trying to get Lyra and Malcolm together, which is just creepy considering Lyra's like 13 and he's... Malcolm is 13 when he's looking after Lyra and she's a baby and he's like feeding her and changing her and now he's like ooh she's grown into a woman like you were teaching her literally like three years ago mate back off that's a bit creepy so I don't know if Philip Pullman's literally just brought this story back to be like I'll give Lyra a love interest and it won't be Will ha 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 I hope it's not that because if her and Malcolm end up together I'm gonna riot but like I'm looking forward to the next book in the trilogy for some bloody reason because this was a two star and it was so hard to get through like 700 pages and you get to like page 300 and you're like oh this is really disappointing and then it just gets worse quick before you finish next book more or less than a thousand pages oh I think it's gonna be less than a thousand pages because I think if he does more than a thousand pages it's just gonna completely alienate the audience because the original books were so much smaller I think it's going to be longer than The Secret Commonwealth, but I don't think it's going to be quite a thousand pages. I'm going to go with like 820. Because 900. 900. Okay, Sean thinks it's going to be 900. So we will revisit this when the next book is out and we'll be like, oh God, how was it only 600? Or how was it like 1,500? This might be why it's taken them two years to write each one. Who knows? So the next book that we read in February was The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, I was planning on reading the Lord of the Rings series as well this month, but we only had time for this one, so we're going to read that in March. Um, I really enjoyed The Hobbit. Like, I don't know why it's taken me this long to read it, because it's a really nice self-contained story. Like, a lot of people say that The Lord of the Rings is really long, and I did feel like this was a bit long at points, because there were bits when I was like, oh, just carry on. Like, you're walking, you're stopping with loads of random people, you're not really sure what's going on. But, um yeah like it was it was really enjoyable you follow a guy called bilbo and a wizard turns up on his door with like a shit ton of dwarfs and they go on a journey to get the dwarfs gold back from under this mountain because this dragon sat on it and um the Mer like merlin the this wizard dragon, smog 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 the dragon smog the dragon is sat under a mountain on some gold and they go and try and get the gold back so the wizard like disappears for a bit and then the dwarves get in trouble and so does Bilbo obviously and then the wizard comes back and is like oh I thought I could trust you guys can't leave you on your own for five minutes but I'm gonna leave again and then you're gonna get in even more trouble so I'm gonna have to come back again like for god's sake I'm trying to do political machinations down in like the south but um yeah like it was really really fun I can't believe it's taking me this long to read it because everyone's like read the hobbit and I'm like nah and now I'm like oh shit why didn't I there's like big eagles they like fly in and they're like hey sup mate uh, i like eagles that can talk who doesn't like eagles that can talk who doesn't like dragons for god's sake smog the dragon best character in here um yeah i absolutely loved it i, I only gave it four stars i'm like oh yeah this is the best thing i read but after like all of the disappointment it was like one star one star two star 
Four star. It's the best book I've ever read. Love it. Um, we're definitely going to be carrying on with the rest of the series. Um, apparently it just gets really slow. So I will probably be like, why aren't these shorter in the next video? But this one could read in a day. I literally did read in a day. Good boy. Oh, and the next one was The Dream Thieves by Maggie Steve Farter. Okay, I'm like so pumped to talk about this. So this is the second book in the Raven Cycle. Read The Raven Boys, gave it four stars. I was like, oh, some of the writing's really clunky. I'm never going to give one of these books five stars. Five stars. Honestly, like <laughs> it was like four and a half, but I couldn't justify rounding it down, so I had to round it up. It's five star. I love that. Um, basically, this focuses more on Ronan. So at the end of the Raven Boys, Ronan's like, oh, I can pull things out of my dreams, and he has like this crow, Raven. What's wrong with me, Raven? That he's pulled out of his dreams. Raven. She's called Chainsaw. She's really cool. Um, so then Ronan in this one, he pulls a ton of stuff out of his dreams. There's like cars, there's like a magic box thing that translates loads of stuff. Like he's so cool. And like honestly, I think I'm more excited about the Raven cycle because I think Ronan and Adam are gonna get together because Ronan quite obviously has a thing for Adam because he's like, I'm gonna pay your tuition secretly and I think it was Gansey. And Adam's like, oh Gansey, why are you paying my tu- wait, wasn't you. And I love it because Adam's like realizing like, oh, Ronan really cares about me. And I just thought he was like a thuggy dickhead. And Ronan's not a thuggy dickhead. Ronan has feelings and Ronan I love it. Gary pod. I don't know what that means. But he gets his pod stuff. Yeah, yeah, he has Gary's mod, apparently. <coughs> oh, coronavirus. Um, but yeah, so Ronan's really, really cool. Uh, Blue and Gansey are like starting to become a thing and I was already into that from like book one. So this is just all for me and my ships. I'm probably wrong. I'm probably gonna get to book four and it's gonna be like, why did I think Adam and Ronan would be a thing? But in this one, my hope is still alive. Five stars. If she gets Adam and Ronan together, this is gonna be my favorite series ever. And I know that Call Day of the Hawk follows Adam and Ronan after the events of the Raven Cycle. Is it because they're like married? And like live together or is it just because they're like really tight bros yo who knows but i'm looking forward to finding out so looking forward to it then we have the impossible life of memory by laurie hall sanderson now i loved winter girls i loved speak and all of laurie hall sanderson's other books i've read i've absolutely hated so i'm pleased to say that the impossible life of memory was a four star uh, this follows a girl called Haley who is new in town and her father has ptsd because he's come back from fighting in war don't know if that actually specifies which war um possibly the war in iraq um but yes so her father struggles with ptsd so Haley's trying to look out for him while she's also trying to settle into this new place um it's just really well written like um i could i could see exactly where it was going and it was very predictable like the ending is not a surprise at all um the relationship between her and i think his name is finn um it's very it's very cute but it's very predictable like they have the breakup they get back together they break up they get the back together um lots of like up and downs there because he has his own stuff going on but the way that they first get together is really cute because he's like oh i've got a date so they work on a school newspaper together so he's like i've got a date you're gonna have to go to the football game for me and then he's at the football game and she's like oh it's your date and he's like i'll take you to meet her and then he takes her to like a secluded hill and she's like i think she's left and he's like her name's Haley." And it's like, oh, it's me. It's, it's just a really fun way. Like, it's really presumptuous. And if it hadn't worked well, it would have been like, whoa, that was creepy. But it's it's written really well. And I think that's like, that's going to be like a standout moment from this book for me because it's just such a simple idea, but it's, it's really well done. And like, it's, it's, in, it's very rare to see books about PTSD, YA books about it. And I think that it really shows not only the way that her father is suffering, because you get little um, flashbacks throughout of like him in the war zone, him seeing his comrades dying around him, him feeling responsible for all their deaths. But you also see the way that Haley is struggling to support him and struggling to s help him cope with it all. And um, I think this is going to be one of those books that really helps people who have been in that situation. And even if you've got a parent who isn't necessarily struggling with PTSD, but is struggling with something, and you don't know how to help them i think this is a book that would be really worth picking up because it gives you like it lets you know that it's not bad to like rely on other people like you don't have to carry it all on your own shoulders and you don't have to do it all yourself i think that's a really good moral and i'm really glad that laurie holz anderson wrote this and i'm really glad that i picked it up it's also like the longest book i think she's ever read most of her books are like 200 pages but this one's like charm here so now we have another disappointment and this was the ruining by anna colmore um this ended up being a one star and i honestly on the back it says it's a sexy thriller as twisty as the north california coastline 
it's not it's it's not at all she goes to work for a family the mum is like an absolute psycho the dad's like hey i don't really care i'm gonna go work cool whatever so she has a baby and she has a daughter and she like completely ignores the daughter and just fobs her off on the nanny and again a little spoiler warning for you but you're probably not gonna read this because it it's very old um my first thought was oh the only reason that i wouldn't be like interested in my kid was if it wasn't my kid so i was like oh i bet it was like his kid from a first marriage and she's like and then i was like ah what if she killed the first wife guess that within the first 50 pages it was exactly what happened it was so disappointing it was trying to be like a modern version of the yellow wallpaper by charlotte perkins gilman and it completely failed and it references it all the way through and it's like oh no like i have yellow wallpaper in my room now it's spooky it's not spooky, it's called plagiarism. And that is the scariest thing about this book for me. I don't like it, and I really wish I hadn't bothered reading it. One star. We have a lot of one stars this month, considering we haven't had one since August. But we also read The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, because my partner hadn't read it before. I've read it twice, absolutely loved it. it was like, oh, it's way better than this story. So we picked it up afterwards. Five stars. So swings and roundabouts we wouldn't have read a five star if we hadn't read the one star but we could have saved our time on this one it would have been easier to save our time on it it's a shame okay the next book that we read in february was the poet x by elizabeth acevedo um i heard a lot of people talking about elizabeth's writing because it was black history month so a lot of people were picking her on their tbrs and i thought well we've got this one we've got some time at the end of the month where we haven't read anything so i thought i'd pick it up um, this is written in verse. Verse is always very hit and miss for me because I feel like if the story makes sense tumble in verse, it works amazingly. If it doesn't make sense tumble in verse, it's just a lazy way of not putting as much detail into your writing and not like structuring it. Well, um, so many people are going to disagree with me on that because verse is really popular. But this one works brilliantly because it follows a girl called Sayamara who does poetry. And um, obviously written in verse really brings the story to life. You really get into Sayamara's head. Um, you really feel like you you have a lot of like the same tension that she has so she doesn't want to disappoint her parents because her parents want her to like save herself until marriage but she's also starting to fall in love with this guy and um meanwhile her parents don't want her to do like poetry because they think it's not good for her to share her thoughts because um she's very honest and open in her poetry and it's a lot of things that they think they that they don't want her to be thinking about and um so you really get that tension all the way through and i think the way that it's written in the verse works beautifully um this was elizabeth acevedo's debut i believe and it is astounding like we gave it five stars and i would happily read it again already and we only read this at the last week of february um i'm looking forward to reading as the fire on high i believe is her next book and uh, that's about cooking like who's not going to enjoy reading a book about food um but yeah i think this was this was just the perfect combination the verse the story the characters it it was just blew me away and I really wish I'd read this earlier because I think we read it in literally like two hours and we just sat there and sped through it because when you start it, it's impossible to stop. And like obviously where it's written in verse, it's like it's a very quick, easy read to digest. Um, so yeah, if you've got a spare afternoon, definitely pick up The Poet X. The next book I read in February was The Rag Witch by Garth Nix. This is Garth Nix's debut novel. If you don't know the name, it, he also wrote The Inheritance Trilogy, I believe it's called. Um, Serial, a person... Oh, it's the Old Kingdom series. Oh, Inheritance is Aragorn, that's the dragons. Um, no, so he also wrote uh, Sariel, Apolson, Liriel, Clariel. I don't know how many books there are now, but um, that's where you'll know the name from. Um, so this follows um, two siblings, um, a girl called Julia who gets possessed, or, or she possesses this thing called the Ragwitch, and Paul who goes into the Ragwitch's realm to try and save her. Um, <sighs> It's a hard one because I think if I'd read it when I was a bit younger, I would have really enjoyed it because I would have been able to like suspend my disbelief a bit more. But um, there was just a lot that felt quite like The Hobbit, actually. Um, it was kind of like a very similar world. Um, you had a lot of like creatures that weren't that well described, very, very briefly described, but then they were just referenced by their name all the way through. So it was hard to keep on top of everything like there's things called like the stone men and i can't remember what they're called like the auroch the angarling was the stone men the grouch um it's it's very murdery like 
considered as like an evil big bad and it's like more of a children's book than a teak one um you do get a lot of like characters dying and it's like quite emotional at times but it's also just quite simplistic um i think it's yeah it's it's very one note and um, there aren't really many ups and downs um and i think i i ended up getting quite bored however i am going to keep this because i think this is going to be a really good book for story time for the babies because um like when they're a bit older obviously like for a bedtime story i think it will work really well and i think yeah if i wasn't as old as i am i probably would have loved it um, i gave it three stars because i thought it all came together very cleverly in the end and um the sections where julia was in the rag which you really did get that claustrophobic feeling you really did get the fear so Garth Nix definitely had a lot of potential as a writer when he wrote this, but I think there's a reason that the Old Kingdom series is the one that he's known for. Um, this one's kind of like slipped under the radar a little bit. The next books that we read in February were the first two books in the Summoner series by Taran Matharu and also the short story called Origins. So we didn't read 20 books beginning with the, this month. We read 19 and one that didn't, but let's, let's forget that. Is she okay? Oh, Sophia. So um, I'd read Origins before and I only gave it three stars, but my partner absolutely loved it. So I ended up bumping it up to four. And these two books were five stars for him and four stars for me. So this might actually be the first series that I'm more critical than he is. Um, but we follow a boy called Fletcher who um, is given a scroll and with this scroll he can summon a demon. Um, his demon is called Ignatius, it's a little fire salamander and um, he gets sent off to this school called Vocant Academy where he can learn more about being a summoner. Um, so in the first book he is a novice and in the second book he undergoes an inquisition because something happens at the beginning which I'll, I won't say so this bit's spoiler free. Um, but he ends up getting arrested and he's up uh, in a trial. Is it going to be quiet enough for me to carry on? <laughs> Fave is crying everywhere, I'm very sorry. Um, but no, so um, Fletcher is up for trial and um, yeah, so in the second book he's up for trial, in the first book he's like learning how to be more of a summoner. Um, it's a very, very good series. It's kind of like, if you think of like the demons from His Dark Materials, but like Pokemon, so you can summon them, they're not always there. Um, like cross with a bit of Harry Potter because you've got like the magical school. Cross with a bit of like Lord of the Rings because you've got like the big journey and you've got like orcs and dwarves and elves and it's all a very magical world. So um, it's like all of the best bits of all of your favourite series, like slammed together. Uh, there's just something missing in each of them for me and I can't even put my finger on what it is, but I'm they're just not quite there for me um, i'm hoping it's all going to come together in the third book which is the battle mage and then we're also going to read the prequel as well because there's a week called the outcast um but i'm glad that we managed to get through these because i started the novice many many moons back i uh, just before it came out but i just kept getting distracted and playing pokemon so the fact that we managed to get through two of these without having a pokemon break pretty impressive and yeah i'm i love taramatharu's writing i think his ideas are really really well done and he definitely like plucks the best bits of all of the things to like combine them together there's just something missing for me and i'm not sure what it is and the last book that i read in february was the replacement by brenna Govanov. um this was the last book that was on our tbr video so we successfully did all of our tbr um this is about a boy called mackie who is a changeling child so he like the actual Mackie gets taken and he gets put in his place and he's living in this town where he's surrounded by iron and blood iron and he's slowly dying so he has to go down to like this dark underground world where he came from um because his sister makes a deal with them to get medication so that he will survive a bit longer um honestly the first half was five stars for me i thought Mackie in his natural element with like the people around him knowing he was different not knowing how to deal with it was really really strong and then as soon as all of the magical stuff and he like goes down to the underworld i just lost all interest um brenny Ovanov doesn't want to give the fae a name because she says there's a lot of power in a name so they're very much like they're described they're all very different like there's girls with like slit throats there's like a tiny little princess who's like really creepy and like runs around with like a little wand um, but she won't give them a name, so they're kind of like fake cross with vampires because they have a lot of power and blood and stuff. Um, but yeah, it fell apart quite quickly, and I feel like the ending was very rushed. Um, it was very predictable how it was going to end up. 
Running of Long's writing is really, really nice. It reminds me of my Steve Bathurst writing in that there's some bits that are really lyrical and there's some bits that you think, my God, that's one of the best sentences I've ever read. But uh, the majority of it is quite clunky and it doesn't flow very well and it feels like a bit disjointed. Um, so yeah, I ended up giving this one three stars, which is really disappointing because the first half was like a five star for me and I thought, oh yay, another really good book to read this month. But it did end up falling apart a bit. Um, I'm interested in reading more of Brandy Ravenov's books and I do have one of hers called Paper Valentine on the shelves so I'm going to end up picking that up at some point but this is one that I think like maybe if I would read it at the time I would have loved it more but I feel like enough time has passed since the time when like Changelings and Vampires and all those things were like really big um, that yeah, I just didn't really gel with it. And that is it for our February wrap up. So we read 20 books in total, as you could see, like a few one stars, a few five stars. It was a very nice month for reading because it was very all over the place. Like we had some good ones, some bad ones. Like I would have preferred to have less bad ones, but what are you gonna do? Um, I hope you enjoyed this wrap up. If you've got any thoughts to share about any of the books that I talked about, please leave them down in the comments. Uh, like it if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, hit me up on Twitter, all those things. Um, Twitter, everything Alice. Go to the blog, I'll put a link down in the doohickey when I've got the TBR jar actual like reviews up so you can see my thoughts a bit more on some of those. Um, and yeah, so that's Alice signing out and it was good to talk to you for a bit. Bye!